do? What is the message intended to do? Let's do a bit of thinking here. So when he speaks, what is it going to happen to, to the people? To convict them. To convict them, okay? And what is going to happen to them now as the Bible says? It says, keep on hearing, but will not what? Perceive. Understand. Yeah. Keep on seeing, but will not perceive. What he's actually saying is about some of us who are not willing to obey the voice of the master. Wow. He says they will hear it, but they will not understand because they are not prepared to do what is going to be revealed wow. to them. Wow. They will see it, but there will not be any perception, any insight because they have actually fallen by default not to obey the voice of God. And so God is saying that they are going to be taken into captivity. And so you go, you tell, say the message, the message will go to them, but they will not understand it. They will not perceive it. But then it will be a testimony against them. For some of them will be taken to far away lands. And then there will be a stamp. That is the holy stamp. And that is the last verse. What is, yeah, please cast the last verse for us. So the holy seed shall be its stamp. In other words, God is going to purge people with the message, the same message, okay? But it is interesting, and I wouldn't go there today. Today, I want us to focus on the verses one to four. And if possible, we'll add verse number five. So the Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. When we were looking at this, later did we know that our noble and gallant Queen Mother was going to pass away. I don't think any of us, even though we knew at some point in time, the last three weeks that we said it, what is it, two weeks or three weeks? Three weeks, yeah? Yeah. So I believe it is prophetic that many are going to know the Lord through this death of our Queen Mother. I'm not sure whether you are hearing me. Mm, mm, mm. God is going to open doors for people to make a choice. Yeah. Either to know the Lord yeah. mm. or to reject Him. Yeah. Mm. And so God is actually on a mission and He is calling some messengers out yeah. to now go and then tell the people. Amen. And so this is what God is saying. Who shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. Which means that Isaiah allowed himself to be prepared. And so for the first point that I want us to look at, for you to allow yourself to be prepared for the good work, which is what God is going to create, is to know that master who is going to send you. And so God is going to open your eyes, first and foremost, to know him. There is nobody, and I say it again, there is nobody in this life that can be fulfilled in what he does if God does not open your eyes to see what he has committed you to do. Mm. Wow. So Isaiah, before he was a preacher of righteousness, go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 9. He says, come and let us reason. Even though your sins might be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He was a preacher of righteousness. But at this point in time, he is seeing the king of kings. Now I want you to connect something. Verse number 1 and verse number 4. It says, the year that king Uzziah died, the last bit of it is that I saw the king. Now look at it. Can somebody please read it for us? Verse 1. Isaiah chapter one. 6, verse number 1, first. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. Okay, which version are you using? You are using the international version. Okay. 
Prophecy is Say it again. Read it again. Verse number one. In the year that King Uzziah died, Ken Uzziah died. Uh -huh. I saw also the Lord okay. sitting upon a throne. That's right. I and lifted up. Now go to verse number five. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. For my eyes have seen the king. In other words, God was using Uzziah's death to reveal him the king of kings. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, my eyes were opened and I saw the king of kings. And I believe that this year, up until the next year, there are going to be many people who would struggle to enter into the kingdom of God. Mm. Because God is about to explode something that is going to be an explosion. There is going to be an influx of people wanting to enter into God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. You see, if the queen could die at some point in time, yes. and she placed her faith in God, and she was very open with her faith, she didn't shy away from her faith. I believe a window had been opened for us to be able to key in that many will come to know the Lord. And so the year that King Uzziah died, God said, Isaiah, you have been preaching righteousness, but set yourself apart. I am bringing you to reveal myself to you so that you will know the intent of my heart. You have been preaching of your own. You have been doing things the way that your, your sister is telling you, but I am going to give you my mission. Hmm. God is on a mission. God is on a mission. And the first mission that God wants for us to know is that for you to be able to allow God to prepare you for every good work, you need to know God. You need to see God. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you need to see God like Isaiah saw God like a, 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 an open heaven or something. But you need to know that this is God. Now in the Bible you can see, and so I'm going to be picking some uh, few people just to consider and then uh, elaborate this point and then we are done. Okay, so let's look at Genesis 28 verse 10 to 17. So anyone who has to be prepared for every good work, must first acknowledge that the God of missions will reveal himself to you. And that gives you confidence. And so at some point in time, you see, Sister Ellie, sorry to use the distance, and Brother Jeremiah, if they, don't, they didn't know God, and they went into this, like, okay, yes, you are beautiful, you are handsome. Then where are they going to turn to? There is going to be a time for everyone that your knowledge, your science, and everything is not going to work. You have to rely on something called faith. Amen. Mm, amen. And whose, whose faith do you want to rely on? Mm. Faith is like a ladder. It needs a wall in order for you to climb. And sometimes some of us, our faith is standing like, you know, some, sometimes there are some people who climb ladders that are standing, yeah? Yeah, yeah the ladder will stand and it will climb and then, they, they, yeah, some of us, that is what we are doing. <laughs> our faith is, is not having any kind of foundation, mm. okay? It's, it's just hanging. And so, our faith is dangerous. Wow. Yes, true. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Genesis chapter... 28 verse 10 to 17. Can, can we quickly read it? I think this is, yeah. I just want to elaborate the point that for you to be able to allow yourself to be prepared, you need to see the God who had called you. In a spectacular way. That is what I call the first principle. Yes, can somebody please read? And Jacob 
went out from Beersheba mm. and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were, were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Mm. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Okay, brother, please jump to verse 16 and 17 for the sake of time. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. I pray that I pray that somebody will, will be awakened from his spiritual sleep. Amen. You see, the Lord is here. Say the Lord is here. The Lord is here. You see, this guy has been blessed. He is blessed with a blessing. In fact, he is carrying the blessing of the family. But he is actually um, he has to run away from the brother. And so in that sense, he went to sleep at a place. And the Lord wanted, to, wanted him to know him. He didn't know the Lord up until this time. Even though the dad was a man of God, he was a prophet, he didn't know the Lord. And so he went to sleep at this place. And then the Lord revealed himself unto him. And so this is what Jacob now claimed. He says what? Then Jacob awoke from his sleep. And said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And it is my prayer that some of us will not just walk in Christianity without seeing this God. This God that we are serving. He wants to reveal himself to us. Amen. But brothers and sisters, we are not in the position. We are not ready to receive him. You see, much as God wants to reveal himself to us, the enemy also is wanting to reveal himself to you. Mm. And I do occasionally, of course, I go to the YouTube. There was a girl, an American girl. How old is she? I don't know. But when she was a teenager, she doubled herself in new age. He said the new age gave her some kind of a sense of false hope. Now she's a Christian. And I'm asking myself, do we still have some young people doubling in this kind of spirituality, so-called spirituality, hmm. thinking that they have power? Hmm. There is power in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so this Jacob, God said, you have a blessing. And it's my blessing, but you don't know the God who blesses. And so he revealed himself to him because that is the point of preparation. Not until God has revealed himself to you, you not allow yourself to be prepared. Mm. I can tell you. I can give you. Now you can go to church, you can do everything, but not until you have come to that point where you have encountered face to face with the God of all flesh. No, it will be difficult. And some of us, I, some of some of us, I can tell you, you are struggling big time. All I want you to do is that God open my eyes, Amen. open my eyes, and let me behold you. Amen. Open my eyes to see you, Amen. to see who you are, your beauty, your glory, Amen. brothers and sisters. When you see God, yes. the real God that I'm talking about, yes. every other mm. thing. It's nothing to you. Hallelujah. 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 Compared to the glory that God is about to reveal to you. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. It will sound nonsense mm. to you today. But I know the same word is going to re echo mm. at some point to you. Amen. As you listen to it. Amen. You may you may hear you may hear a sound. But the understanding, I pray that God will work it out for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers, I have preached, I have taught, I have done this. I wanted to become a Methodist minister. And if I had become a Methodist minister, I tell you, I would have given birth to children. <laughs> I know who I am. I know, I know who I was. I would have taken the church's money, consume it, 
Because at that time, I'm, I can fiddle out figures and then, yeah. But God arrested me. He arrested me. And he brought me to his cell. You see, you look at me, my face looks very humble, isn't it? Very innocent. Hey! <laughs> Testify. Brothers and sisters, I took somebody's money. Hey. She was right there. I took the money. Okay, let me go. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when we are talking about some of these things, it's not like, oh, we just went through the normal this thing. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes, you see, the environment that you find yourself, your experience is not like that. Mm. Sometimes when we are talking about spiritual things, I mean, yes, somebody will say, when it, it comes to, when the Bible says Jesus dealt with mental, listen, you will say it's schizophrenia, isn't it? Yeah. You give it a name. And it has a name, isn't it? Mm. But the Bible says that demonic yes. spirit powers. Yes. Mm. Spirit. Are they still there? Or maybe they are finished. <laughs> they are in operation. Yeah. And so, Jacob slept. But God revealed himself to Jacob. I pray that God will reveal himself yeah. to you at some point. My brother, uh, your name again. The brother, yes. Michael. 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 The prophet Michael. Hi! Hey. Wow! Yeah. You see, you think, you may think that, uh, or he may think, or maybe, and I'm just using you as an example, yeah? Sometimes when people come to that point, you see, God <laughs> wants to prepare you. He wants to use you. He has something something in you his spirit inside of you should not go waste and so he's arresting you at some point in time now when that happens you don't feel happy you can even get every money you can you can get business you can get bars you can get uh what you call burdens all the be that you know but you don't feel the joy of the lord that's right i pray that God will open our eyes. The second person is Moses. Now, we will not read, but when you go home, you can read it. Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, verse 1 to 6. You see, when God wanted to rescue Israel, because Israel was in bondage, God revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. And what happened? Moses was running away. Yeah, and God called Moses. And so Moses responded. You see, God encountered Moses in that burning bush so that he would know that God is preparing him for good work, for every good work. Amen? Amen. Moses has lived in Pharaoh's house. He has been educated by the education of uh, Egypt, but he needed to encounter the person of God. You see, he actually tried to do it his own way yeah. by fighting physically. Yeah. And God says, it's not by might, it's not by power, Amen. it's by my spirit. Amen. Some of you, you have, you have got a hint of what God wants you to do. And you started doing it. Sometimes it could be a business, sometimes it could be a work, sometimes it could be marriage, sometimes it could be some other stuff. But then you come to a point and you realize that, no, this thing called business, it's not just... Uh, I have money and I have uh, an idea and then I go into it. You need the grace of God. Amen. And so Exodus chapter 3, God revealed himself to Moses and Moses was hiding. God says, no, this is not a time to hide. Just come up. And I pray that God will reveal himself to each one of us. Amen. That, that, is the, that is the plan of God. For God, to, for you to allow yourself to be prepared for every good work, the first thing that comes up. That is when God meets you. And then when he meets you, he reveals himself. Amen. And so you have now confidence, not in yourself, but in God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. You remember the apostle, uh, the, the person that we call Apostle Paul. He was actually Saul. And at that time, now I'm just, all that I'm trying to do is to prove to you or to say to you that the Bible is very clear. When it comes to God preparing somebody for every good work, you need to know the person who is actually going to send you. Who wants to work for NHS 
that doesn't even know the supervisor, the person, and then you enter into NHS and you say, I've been asked to kind of work here. Does that happen? No. Or you went into an office and then you say, okay, they have, been, they have asked me to come. You don't know the boss that is actually asking you to come and work. You don't know the ethics of the, of the business. You don't know the mission statement of the business. And then you say, you have been asked to come and work here. It does not happen even in the world, let alone in God. And people have come thinking that, okay, I see it the way it is. Oh, I can do it. And so they start, they gather a few people, they start praying, and then the church has started. And sometimes they can cajole and then twist people and turn people, and then miracles are happening. Mm -hmm. you, miracles are easy. Yeah. Miracles are easy. But living a life yeah. that is from above yeah. is not something that you can manufacture. Mm -hmm. Christianity mm -hmm. is not something that anybody can cook up. Yes. Can just add this and add this. It's not a formula. Amen. It's not a ten point distance. Mm. That's why some churches, 